If we were to list the scariest forms of motorsport, this would be very near the top of my list. I've driven a fair few very scary cars, Formula One cars, classic sports cars with very simple suspension and some very fun hill climb cars. But this drag racing series takes the biscuit. They are called drag carts and they can beat pretty much anything that would come off a production line. They've got 450 horsepower and only weigh 250 kilograms. Yep, that's a power to weight ratio of 1800 horsepower per tonne. But perhaps the scarier thing is that it's all attached to a custom-made, home-built chassis. So let me take you through the insane engineering behind drag carts and explain just how fast these things are. Now, I feel like I need some context here. For me, a scary car is something that is hard to predict or where things can go wrong faster than you can save them. And for me, the scariest car that I've driven is a 1992 Benetton Formula One car. This thing had 680 horsepower and only weighed 505 kilograms. This comes out at 1,340 horsepower per tonne, which is pretty much identical to today's F1 cars. But what made it very scary was how relatively simple the suspension was. It had fairly conventional push rod suspension, which compared to today's systems was very unrefined. And it was from a time before the third damper, a spring that controls how stiff the car is when loaded up with aero. And so to keep the floor close to the ground, but not too close, and producing the maximum downforce, the car was designed to be extremely stiff. This made the Benetton a real handful and launching it over curbs around Zolda was pretty scary. If you caught the wrong one or landed in a weird way, it could spit you off the track into one of the close barriers. And whilst it was initially terrifying, it did become good fun once you had calibrated to the speed and the stiffness of the car. Now for the competition. This is Scott Cooper and his CBR 1000 drag car. And we spoke to him to see what on earth he was thinking when he built this thing from scratch and then races it at speeds of up to 185 miles an hour. It started life as a standard car chassis, most likely intended for speeds of about 50 or 60 miles an hour. It's been chopped into two, meaning only the front section remains. And behind that, the car is fully bespoke. And it's custom made in order to fit a CBR 1000 engine to it. And this comes from the top of the line sports bike from Honda. It's an inline four cylinder that revs to well over 12,000 RPM, which is more than enough to make that bike a handful. But Scott has added a massive twin screw supercharger. But that's not all. He also runs it on pure methanol, which as a fuel actually contains less energy per gallon than normal fuel. However, you can burn much more of it per stroke as it needs less air and ultimately produces as much as 60% more power than if it were to run on petrol. And all of that means the engine produces around 450 horsepower. Have you ever had any close moments in it? Oh, I've had quite a few, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and is that typically at the end of the run? No. No. A anywhere. <laughs> it can happen anywhere. It can happen anywhere. <laughs> so like the stages of the run in it, you've got the launch. Obviously, you're just trying to get as much traction as you can. And I guess the risk there is that you just light the rears up and get a bit of a fishtail going. Yeah. Uh, and then the second phase of it, as you're kind of accelerating and going through the gears, is that dodgy at all or is that generally OK? If, if I can stand on the throttle, yeah. Get the Can weight. You get it flat out. I haven't really since I've changed over to the supercharger and the, uh, the fuel injection system. I haven't been able to give it any more than half throttle. At any point down the run, it just spins the tyres. <laughs> <laughs> these high-powered bike engines are perfect for these carts, at least to be quick in a straight line. They produce a lot of power for something so small and light, as well as coming with a pneumatic sequential gearbox that can shift in 20 milliseconds, pretty similar to any high-end rally car. So with all that, it's unsurprising that traction is the cart's biggest issue. So the cart runs on junior drag tyres on the rear that are very similar to the top fuel slicks that we made a video about last year. And where normal race cars run at between 20 and 30 PSI in their tyres, these carts run at just 6.5 PSI, just a little more than top fuel dragsters do. And this is why the tyres are actually bolted to the rim. It's called beadlock and is there because the pressure is so low. The power would literally spin the tyre off the rim. 
and the carts use such low tyre pressure for two reasons. Firstly, this gives the largest footprint between the tyre and the track, aiding in traction off the line. But it also allows the tyre to actually change shape throughout the run. We explain this fully in our Dragster Tyres video, but simply the tyres squat down at the beginning of the run and expand at the end. This both changes the gearing of the car and reduces rolling resistance at higher speeds. However, this isn't really enough and the car also uses a simple aero package, including a front splitter cowling and a rear wing, aiding stability and grip at higher speeds. Driver61 is looking to hire a brilliant new writer. Now, of course, you can skip if that's not you. We're looking for a brilliant writer to join the growing team at Driver61 and our new channel, Driven Media, which we want to grow into the most exciting automotive channel on YouTube. If you're someone who has a deep passion for cars, spends their weekends with oily hands and tells their friends about the latest cars, you should get in touch. Check out the application link in the description below. So exactly how fast are these drag carts? Well, Scott's personal best is a 9.05 second quarter mile, which if you're a drag racing nut, you know is mega fast. But in case you're not, Here's some comparisons. Now look at this. Here are the top 20 recorded quarter mile times from fastestlaps.com, where they list stats from pretty much every production car and bike, as well as some race cars. And here's how Scott's drag car lines up. At the top of the pile is the insane Porsche 919 race car, then the 2004 Ferrari F1 car, and then the incredible Rimac Nevera with nearly 2000 horsepower and four wheel drive. But the drag cart beats everything else, even the Red Bull RB7 Formula 1 car, as well as the Bugatti Chiron. And bear in mind that the price of these cars is in the hundreds of thousands of pounds, if not the millions. Now, it must be said that Scott's time was on a grippy drag strip at Santa Pod, but the manufacturers tend to publish times in absolutely perfect conditions too, so we can pretty much call it even. And it'd be no surprise that the incredible performance comes from the car having such incredible power to weight. 1800 horsepower per tonne compared to 1300 from today's Formula One cars. But that's not the only reason it's so fast. There are many other factors. Things like a very small frontal area, so the drag is pretty low. Drag slicks, very little fuel, minimal bodywork, very little cooling, as well as many other factors. But a significant one is that the car is tuned for maximum acceleration only, and so can be very light. For example, a Formula One car, which really can't be considered heavy, has to carry 110 kilograms of fuel for a race. It has to be stiff for cornering, the tires have to be larger, the impact protection is much higher, and so on. As well as the obvious point that the F1 car has to be good around a lap, not just in a straight line. But it has to be said, even with these things, the performance of these drag carts is astonishing. But I'm not sure that I would want to race one of these. I mean, would you get into one of these drag carts? They are as if you strapped a motorbike engine to your spine and just went for it. For example, Scott was telling me about a few times where the car has got away from him and being sideways on drag slicks with your legs for a crumple zone at 160 miles an hour doesn't sound like the most fun. Scott wears racing leathers and a helmet, but beyond that, there isn't much protection. This is so different compared to the Formula One cars I've driven, which have been crash tested, heavily researched, and have carbon safety cells that are incredibly safe. There is also the fact that the wheelbase is very short, so that makes the car twitchy. So if you begin to get sideways, things will go wrong very fast. And the steering is super sensitive. It's not far from the steering on a normal car. And if you've ever driven one of those, you know how twitchy they can be. And perhaps the craziest thing that Scott mentioned was that the car has so much power that in the past he has twisted the rear axle, which picks up one wheel and can then spear you off into the wall. And strapping yourself into one of these carts and racing as these guys do, well, that takes some serious bravery and skill, of course but mainly bravery. And that really reminds me of the 500 horsepower drag sled we made a video about a while ago. You can watch that here. Thanks so much to Scott for coming on, as well as Santapod Raceway for providing the footage. There are links in the description below to check them out. Also, we are going to the Turkish Grand Prix this weekend and we'll be posting our adventures on Instagram. You should follow me over there at official underscore drive 61. Cheers and see you next time.